Come down to the Spring Fever Comedy Showcase at the Hidden History Museum on Saturday, April 13th, 2024 at 7 p.m. Get ready to group to great music, indulge in complimentary dinners and drinks, and brace yourself for an uproarious comedy extravaganza. Featuring the comedic talents of Tori Hart, Ron G, comedian CP, and many others, with dynamic boasting by Dwan B and Jarek. Don't miss out! RSVP now at HiddenHistoryMuseum.com. That's HiddenHistoryMuseum.com. So, it's totally different. It's a totally different vibe. All right, let me get um, Cookie's World. All right. Let's get Cookie's World in here. What's up, Cookie? All right, Miss Cookie, let's turn the microphone on, ma'am. Waiting on Miss Cookie to get it together. And again, family, y'all let me know who you guys <clears throat> would like to see speak at the rally in D.C. this June. I definitely want to get Brother Marcel. Got to get him. Got to get Brother Marcel. Oh, sorry about that, guys. Got to get Marcel. Got to, we got to Afro Elite. <clears throat> want to get Reza Islam. Want to get Black Alpha Network. Y'all throw some more names of who we should have speak. Some people said Claude Anderson, but Claude, he's not really doing public speaking like that no more because of health reasons. So y'all throw some more names and let's see what we can do. Um, I know we're going to get Dr. Mayat. She's down. I, I wanted to get Brother Kaba, but I think he might be over in Africa during the time in early June. So again, y'all throw some more names at us who y'all would like to see. Let's get um, Brother Dashan. Let's get Dashan Farad in here. Oh, did I add, did I add you? Let me add you. Oh, there you go. Brother Deshaun. Oh. No, oh, I can I cannot hear you, brother. It was something going on with your phone, brother. The 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 service was a little bad. Let's get um young L Y D. Let's get young L Y D. What's up, young? Young L-Y-D. All right, you can unmute yourself, brother. If you unmute yourself, that would be great. And while we're waiting on you to unmute yourself, let's get 10 IC. Let's get 10 IC. All right. <clears throat> Hello. What's up, 10? Hey, what's going on, brother? How you doing? I'm good, man. What's on your mind? Hey, I just wanted to know if you had seen that video footage out of Houston, Texas. I think it was sometime last week of um, this Uber driver had run over this um, two-year-old girl. and Oh, yeah, the family whooped his ass, didn't they? Yeah, they beat the shit out of that, that tether. And I just wanted you to really elaborate on how dangerous these tethers are. And they really, you know, they, they got it out for us, foundational black Americans. It just, you know... <laughs> Be careful out there, family. I just wanted you to elaborate. Now, where where was the guy? Where's the driver from? His name was Muhammad Khan. I'm not quite sure exactly where he was from, um, but I, by the name, you know, he sounded like he was, you know, some sort of West African. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, yeah, yeah. That happened out there in um Houston. Yeah. This dude, this Uber driver, they let the family out, and then he ran over a kid. I'm like, what the hell? And they put paws on his ass. And I hope the kid is all right. I don't, I, I don't think the kid died. I hope the kid didn't die. But um, very interesting, very interesting. Out there in Texas, man, there are a lot of non-FBAs out there, man. When I, the last few times I've been to Texas, and I've had Uber and Lyft drivers, every single one of them are non-FBAs. There's a lot of them out there in Texas, man. A lot of them. Okay, let's get, um. let me see, Dr. Davinsky in the building. What's up, Dr. Davinsky? Let's get our, our white supremacist, our in-house white supremacist, Dr. Davinsky in here. What's going on, Dr. Davinsky? 
Hey, brother Tariq, how we doing today? I'm good. Did you ever make it back to Australia or are you still in Thailand? Uh, so right now I'm heading to Japan, but uh, cool. yeah, I'll be going back to Australia for my birthday. Uh, I just wanted to touch on the Pajit question. And Pajit isn't a slur, okay? You're allowed to say this on X. And uh, I'm just curious about your perception on this because if you look at their history, we had Gandhi, a notorious racist in South Africa, right? Right. And he's, ha he's hailed as this hero. This man, like they build statues of him. He was known for using the N-word equivalent in his everyday right. vernacular, right? And then, so I saw this video the other day. This was in Kerala. It's the most developed part of India. There was a uh, West African from the Ivory Coast and he was playing on a field. And the entire Pajit fan base just ran onto the field and attacked this one man, calling him a monkey, calling him all these slurs. And like, th there's this issue in Africa, and I think it's coming to America with this with this un, uh, unregulated border situation. You know, a lot of the migrants coming across now are from India. So I feel like you guys are going to become a slave class to this to this new emerging Pajit overlordship. W what's your take on this? Um, yeah, we're not going to be a slave class to them because yeah, we're not going to. You know, they don't have the military. <laughs> power as the white supremacists have. See, the only reason the white supremacist way are able to keep us subjugated is because of the military power they have to enforce it. That's why they spend so much money on military. And most of that military firepower is pointed at us. These other classes don't have it like that. Um, and they don't stand a chance because, see, we're not afraid of the white supremacists. We understand that they are like the Wizard of Oz. We understand the the coward behind the mask. We understand. That's why we don't have a problem stepping to them. So they, they need literally a whole army for one or two of us. These Pajits, they, they these other guys, they don't they don't stand a chance. If they want to try that, that that's not gonna work on us. They're going to get a rude awakening. You dig? Um, Ro, Raunadi? Raunadi. Hope I'm pronouncing your name right. All right. Unmute your microphone. Ahmed. Ro Nadim Ahmed. I'm going to unmute your microphone. All right. Well, he's over there making some tandoori. Okay, let's get Val. Let's get Sister Val. Miss Val? Bringing me up. Uh, I just have an announcement to make. Um, on April 15th, New Negro Republic is going to have a demonstration at the Lincoln Memorial on April 15th. Um, we're inviting everybody at, in the space, FBA, um, whatever your um, hashtag is, um, come in if you want to speak at our rally. It's, well, it's a demonstration, but I just wanted to make that announcement. And what's and it about, man? What's it about? Oh, it was for reparations. Okay. Got it. Okay. Cool. Okay. So uh, y'all follow Miss Val to get more information on that. Raunadi, mm, Raunadi, hop on, or let's get Miss Civil. Let's get Miss Civil in here. Miss Civil, unmute your microphone. I right, Miss Civil, where you at? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Hey, Tariq, how are you? I'm good, dear. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you for bringing me up. Mm -hmm. Hey, Tariq, a little question for you. Have you ever thought about um, mentoring some of our young and upcoming uh, movie um, producers, um, you know, to so that you don't have to be out here by yourself doing everything, right. you know, um, 
kind of being a mentor, kind of showing them around what to avoid. And then maybe we can, you know, have our own like Sundance Festival at the Hidden History Museum where where they can showcase their documentaries or their art. Have you ever considered doing that or are you just too busy at this point? You know, it's just that that's, you brought up a very good point because I've been, people have been asking me about mentor programs and, you know, that's something that I do need to do. I'm, I'm just so busy doing stuff, but I do need to take out time to, to mentor and just kind of give people the game who would like the game. Shout out to Master P. I know Master P is on the road now doing kind of a mentor thing at different hotels and, and talking to people about entrepreneurship and things like that. So yeah, that's absolutely something that I need to be doing. I'm, I'm doing so many projects. It's, you know, hard to kind of get time to put that together, but I'm going to, I'm definitely going to do that. I'm going to do that because we need it. We do need that. And we need, and I'm always trying to get the, the new young up and coming folks to lace them with games so they can, Hey, here's the blueprint. This is what you do. So yes, that's something that I definitely want to get down and do. And, you know, this is why networking is important too, because when I, I, I like to create these situations where we're all getting together vibing and meeting each other so I can know who's the new cat out here. So I can know who's some of the new up and coming people who got something going on. Y'all remember the the last time we did the rally in um DC? Some phenomenal young folks, man. It was that how many of y'all remember the little eight year old girl? She's like eight smart as hell. I forgot that little girl's name, but she was a little entrepreneur. She had like a, an oil business or something, something some cosmetic business that she had. She gave me some of her products and I still have it somewhere. And little sweet girl, smart as a whip, little eight-year-old girl, extremely articulate, very proud of that little girl, man. So I, I want, I've been wanting to reach out with her family and, and create platforms for that girl to do things too. We have to cultivate our young people and make sure that they have a lane to thrive and grow in that direction. That's very important. So when we have our young people, we have to make sure that they're good so that the white supremacists don't get them. Because let me tell you something, when they see, when the white supremacists see one of our kids that's bright, oh, the white supremacists are doing the bird man hand rub. Because see, what they want to do is get that person and corner them off somewhere so they can create the next Candace Dam Owens. You see, so it's important that we get these young folks and then make them know that their intelligence and their hard work will be rewarded. We have to make sure they're papered up. We have to make sure that they're taken care of. We have to incentivize them to continue doing what they do, and that will incentivize others. You see, we really have to do that. So that's what networking and us getting together and putting programs together and events together so we can network. That's why that's very important. Um, let's get Blacktastic. Let's get Blacktastic in the building. Blacktastic in the building. Hey, what's going on, Flex? What's up, Black? How are you, sir? I, hey, look, I have a, a couple of questions. Is it yes. possible that you could get uh what about Michelle Alexander to the uh, uh rally? I I don't know what her stand on reparations is. And I've worked with her before in one of my movies, but I don't right. know what, I don't know what her stand on reparations is. All right. And, all right. And my second question is is it possible to get your old pay-per-view specials up upload them to iTunes? Um I got to look into it. But yeah, they're still on the Mac Lessons website, I think. Yeah, I know, because I want them on iTunes so I can save them and, and, and listen to them, you know. Yeah, I'll look into that, definitely. i definitely look into that. But, um, yeah, yeah, um, we're still trying to think of some more speakers to have up there, man. We're still trying to think of some more. But they got to be, you know, they got to be down for reparations. That's one thing, because people have dropped some names. But I'm like, are these people really down for reparations? You know? And, um... Where are my UK people? 
we got any people from London in here? You know what? I want to, um, the movie microphone check is coming out. I want to have a premiere in London. I want to find a theater out there in London and have a premiere out there too. I can't go out there cause I still, I'm banned from going out there, but we can still have the movie out there. So my, my UK people, if y'all can holler at me and let me know what theaters are popping out there so we can fill a theater up out there and have the movie microphone check shown there. I would love to do that. Let's get, um, let me see. Now raise your hand if you're ready, because there's a lot of people in here. Let's get Brita, Brita Bon Clyde. All right, let's get Brita. All right. All right, Brita Bon Clyde, and then we'll get Ronnie. What's up, Tariq? Uh, thanks for having me on. I just want to thank you, Tariq, uh, for the work you've been doing. Uh, for the work you've been doing for the last 10 years in terms of uh, raising the consciousness of black folks uh, here in the U.S. And you don't know it, but abroad, you've been raising the consciousness of black folks everywhere. What you've been doing, the likes of you and the new black media, uh, the reparations uh, fight, uh, I have never seen it like this before. Yeah. I, 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 I know it's coming. I know it's coming. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, oh, yeah. I've never seen this before. So uh, hats down, you know, hats off to you and the likes of you for what you've been doing uh, as a Haitian person. I yeah. want to from the Haitian community. I want to thank you, Tariq, for raising the black consciousness level. I think personally what you have been doing uh, is the reason we see um, the reparations movement moving speedily. Uh, mm -hmm. You see countries in the Sahel region like Bakunu Faso, Chad Mali, they kick France out there. They're moving pro-black. You see the Haitians, they, 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 they seem like they want to kick white folks and Americans out and, they, and they're, they're fighting for their revolution. So you yeah. spark a spirit, Tariq, in the likes of you. So we want to take our hats off. And to all the Haitian tethers and all that, man, y'all going to have to stop, seriously, because uh, this, this is the move. This yes, is sir. the move. Uh, with our black America, uh, no one can't win. So I uh, want to thank you. And another thing I want to say. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, but I, I took you off before we got. But I appreciate you, man. Thank you so much, man. Look, I, I ride with the Haitians now. I still, I'm cool with the Haitians. I put them. Ronnie, what's up, Ronnie? Hey, what's up, Tariq? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. What's going on, Ronnie? Hey, what's up, brother? Uh, man, I was, just, I was just wondering, just on a hypothetical note, um, if we were to receive reparations, do you think America or just the powers that be, the work, the people that work together just to keep, you know, black people down, do you think they'll pull some uh, uh, leaving the world behind type stuff, like right when we get our checks? And if so, like, what do we do then? You know, that's it. Yeah, the thing is, I mean, these people, they, they've already pulled out every magic trick that they're going to do to us. They've already done it, man. So we, we don't need to worry about what they're going to do. All the bail threats, like, oh, if we get reparations, that's going to really make the white people mad. Uh, Y'all already mad, man. Y'all already mad. We're already getting punished. We're already getting thrown in jail. We ain't doing nothing. We Man, we, we should have been on this. We should have been saying, hey, let's get this money up. Because we've been sitting around here worrying about some kind of repercussion. We already getting the damn repercussions. We're already getting it. You ain't got nowhere to go but up. You're getting repercussions already. We're getting um, anti-black racism already. No matter what we do, we might as well get our paper. I saw a little Angel, what's her name? Angel Reese, what's her name? Angel Reese. Yeah, she was crying early. I don't want her to do all that crying because of all the racism she's been facing. Because the media's been after her because she's a confident black girl who can play ball good. And... Um, They've been attacking her. I think they lost tonight, I think. I didn't watch the game, but, you know, she's been getting death threats and the white media saying real crazy stuff about these black girls. And we're dealing with this stuff already. These are our kids. These are young folks. Our kids are dealing with this stuff. See, we, we have to start preparing folks. I prepare my kids at a young age. To understand what racism is and you better you better be ready to deal with it 
You dig? You're a cute little kid now, but when you get older, that cute little kid thing ain't going to work. And you're going to start experiencing some real racism. You're going to run into some real Karens out here. So you better have your boots laced up so you can know how to maneuver and move and shake around these white supremacists out here. And I tell my kids, because, you know, they got white friends that they go to school with. I'm like, hey, you can't do what your white friends do. You can't do what you when you get older. You can't do even now. You can't do what the little white kids can do. They have a billion dollars worth of racial insurance and you don't. There's a case now where um, I just saw it. This white guy, his dad is the head coach for the Chiefs or something, the owner of the Chiefs. And this white man was in a DU, DUI. He was drunk and he ran over a little black girl, a little mixed black girl. And I think put her in a coma. And not only they gave him a double slap on the wrist, this white man got a double slap. First of all, they gave him three years and then suspended the damn three years. So he can do his sentence on house arrest. That's called a billion dollars worth of whiteness. You understand? We better understand the game out here. The game is real. All right. Let me see. Let's get some more people in here. Because we got a lot of folks in here tonight. Let's get, um, who's this? Biden Harris famed Hall. All right. Famed Hall, Biden Harris, whatever your name is, hop on. Okay, sir, sir, please don't, don't put your bussy up to the phone like that. Do not put your bussy up to this phone like that, sir. Do not do that. This is not that kind of live stream. We don't want to hear your bussy queefs. All right, let's get some more people in here. All right, let's get um. Rosvi, Rosvi 24. All right. Let's get Rosvi 24. Let's see who else we got in here. Roz. And please don't have hey. your pants. Hey, What's up, man? Hey. hey, man, you're right. I'm your African guy from uh, Zim. We've spoken before. Okay. But, uh, How are you? Yeah. What's up? I'm I'm okay. I've got a question for you. Um, so, what do you think of reparations on Africa? Like, uh, are we not due reparations of ourselves as well? Because uh, you know, like when when they uh, when they came over, the colonizers came over. They took so much gold, so much wealth from us and our people. So, can um, do you? Uh, what's your opinion about that? Do you think we should you, get some you reparations need, as well? Uh, you need you y'all need to holler at Britain. We have been, we but, but do, do you think that your your support as well? Because you're like miles ahead of us. Like you're already do, uh, organizing this situation, and you're trying to get the uh, you know you, you already uh, been there doing it on the ground. So do you think that we can ourselves? Uh, you can we can get some insights on you, your, yourselves, guys, on how to do it and how to get get it done, so that we can start uh, you know mobilizing our people in Africa to get the reparations uh, sorted for us as well. Because right. they say that they took out like 45 trillion uh, worth of money from India alone. So like imagine in Africa how much was taken up. So what's yeah? What's your opinion on that? What advice would you give of yeah, the divas? Holler at Britain. Y'all got to holler at Britain, Portugal, France, all of those European powers. Y'all got to holler at them first. Um, now, from us, you sound like you want us to do the fighting for you. Right? Nah, since, nah, since we're all Africans, isn't it? So we just like, um, we mobilize together. We, 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 we you know, because working Africa is good for the diaspora black as well, the diaspora Africans. Uh, A strong Africa is good for the, for the rest of the black nations out there as well. So, you know, like... So if how we come... Together, okay, if that's the case, okay, then how come y'all not um, fighting for us to get dual citizenship so we want to come over there and build? How come y'all yeah. not fighting for that? 
No, no, no. A lot, a lot of um, people, a lot of folks from your side are going to UK, are going to, I mean, Ghana, um, Senegal, all these African, Western African countries, which I feel like, you know, you can come down in Southern Africa as well, you know what I mean? Like, there's a lot of potential in Southern Africa as well. You can get a lot of money there, uh, especially with the Southern African countries. There's a lot of gold, a lot of tourism, safer places. So, you know, like, a working Africa is better for you guys as well because you've got more opportunities. We welcome you guys. You are welcome to come to our countries and invest. I think maybe there's some unfortunate incidences where people have been, like, um, you know, uh, uh, taking you know taking their money for a ride and everything else but i you know uh, it's all the isolated incidences people that generally the africans out there they want you brothers to come in and obviously if you respect their customs and cultural cultural uh, identities and everything else without looking down on them they will accept you and they will uh, embrace you guys and then yeah you work with business oh. you know in business with uh I had, let me let me land his plane. He's going. Thank you so much, brother. I, I had to land your plane. Oh boy, because I want y'all to pick up on what he was saying. Yeah, y'all can come over and invest. Yeah, it's always we got to drop a bag off. We got to do this. Can we fight for y'all to get reparations too? It, dude, this is what I'm saying. We can't do the one sided thing, man. Good grief, dude. We can't. Everything is about us doing the heavy lifting. Notice I said, hey, what's up with the dual citizenship? So that y'all can, hey, if y'all just want to come over and build somewhere and get some resources and, you know, just we we build. Let's just build. Just get a dual citizenship thing going on. It doesn't take nothing for that. It literally don't take nothing for them to do that. Literally nothing. Well, yeah, yeah, y'all come over and invest in the, uh, well, plebiscite, plebiscite, and plebiscite, and plebiscite, and yeah, it's plebiscite, man. But can y'all fight for us to get reparation too? We all black now, okay. We got to invest, but we you want us to fight for the reparation so that what it is is that they want us to fight for global black reparations so that all black people can get reparations. That's what it is. I'm telling you that's what it is, guys. See, with a lot of the non-FBA people, let me be, this is very important. Remember, it was these African brothers and sisters from the diaspora coming over here talking about what we ain't gonna get and what we shouldn't get. You understand? The main people talking about, I won't even say Africa, the Caribbeans too. Some of the tethers coming over here, not saying everybody from the diaspora are tethers, but the tethers would come over here from Africa and the Caribbean talking about what we shouldn't get. Remember Lovey, Cynthia Revo's homegirl? She did a lecture talking about how she wrote a, a school paper and won an award talking about how we don't deserve no reparations. Yeah, we didn't work for it. And she won some, some award. That's a Nigerian woman over here talking about what we should get. Candace Owens, who has made a platform coming from the Caribbean, that's where her family's from, talking about how we shouldn't get no reparations. and you know, It's a handout and it's begging you got folks from the diaspora who have gone out of their way to undermine reparations movements um, forever. Now that we have delineated, see, that was the key right there. That's why we've made so much progress with this thing. Because now we're talking about us as a lineage group and we're the only ones who's qualified to get reparations from the U.S. government. And all of these other groups that's coming around talking about what we shouldn't get, we nullify them out of the conversation. 
the minute they say something, we get them up out of here. Remember the dude Queens flips from um Joe Budden show? Remember he was we we ain't gonna get no reparation. We we need to stop, man. We need to lead it. We ain't gonna get this. And then people are like, hey, you're Jamaican and Haitian, brother. You're not even qualified to get reparations. What's all this French you're talking, sir? You're not even qualified. So then he had to issue an apology. So yeah, we we've we've checked everybody's paperwork. So now these people who come around with all of that defeatist nonsense talking about what we ain't gonna get. No, 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 no. You can't speak for us. You're not gonna be a spokesperson for us. You're not of our lineage or, or our culture. You see, you're not gonna bring in that fleeing mindset where you run from your problems because that's what y'all bringing to us with that defeatist mindset. Man, we ain't going to get nothing. We might as well just go somewhere else. No, 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 no. We don't, we don't have that fleeing mindset. I'm not trying to denigrate y'all, but there's a mindset that comes with a lot of this rhetoric. We have a stand up and fight spirit, man. And whatever we focus on, we're going to get. You better believe we're going to get reparations. All we have to do is stay focused. The hell, what makes you think we ain't going to get it? Let me, do we have any naysayers in here? Let, let's be real. What makes you think we ain't going to get reparations? What makes you think we ain't going to make these folks cut us a check? That's going to happen. To some tethers, that might seem far-fetched to you. The, the fact of standing up to such powerful people, yes, that's far-fetched to you. Because y'all fled from little musty niggas in office in your homeland. You couldn't even stand up to them little dusty niggas, let alone the white supremacists. But yeah, we can. We'll stand up to them. We'll stand up to them. We ain't got no problem standing up to them. All right? Ain't that right, Dr. Davinsky? We stand up to the Dr. Davinsky's out here. We stand up to them. We ain't afraid of them. Um, Naji, let's get Naji in the building. <clears throat> Excuse me. Naji in the building. Brother Naji. All right, Naji ain't saying nothing. Let's get um Malonius Monk in the building. Malonius Monk. All right. B1 Flex. Cool if I talk right now? What's up, Malone? How you, how you doing, good, bro? man. I'm out of Chicago. So there's one thing I wanted to uh, talk on. Um, I had a conversation with, um, you know, these young black professionals this past weekend about rever reparations. I wanted to pick their heads and see what they said. Um, the curious thing is that they all agreed that the civil rights class, the old niggas, have failed us. But when it came to reparations, they pretty much had the same kind of rhetoric and mindset of them, ironically. So they agreed that we deserve reparations. Right. Oh. They hold on, hold on, Charles. But they said that no check, no cash, because niggas gonna waste the money. Now, I gave my opinion. And I think that it's important, really, on the flip side, what you were saying about, you know, a young FBA brothers and sisters, they're targeting them to be coons already, and they're targeting them to break yeah. them down. So it's important to have these conversations. And it, it you don't even have to go, like, you don't got to go in all the way, you know, because that's like red pill, blue pill, whatever. Like, they're going to look at you crazy. Just get them to talk, listen to them and see how they speak, and then slowly, you know, move on. Um, and, you know, that's all I wanted to uh, chop in on. But uh, great work, hey, good, and, good. Uh, you know, be Thank one. You. Thank you, brother. I'm going to get you in a second, Charles. Well, where you go, Charles? I'm, I'm going to get Charles again. But, my man, you made a good point. And here's the thing. A few things. Um, with the civil rights movement, we did have riders, we had some riders during the civil rights movement. Let's be very clear. The real riders, they're just not elevated like the John Lewis's are elevated and the Bayard Rustins. 
you know, they keep talking about Bayard Rustin and doing movies about him. I think they got Billy Porter. Ain't they going to have Billy Porter play Bayard Rustin now? Bayard was an op. You understand? There's a when when you see the white media really elevating certain people, you know, you you better understand these people were compromised. But we had writers during the civil rights movement, the ones behind the scenes putting in some work, hitting the streets, making the block hot for the white supremacists. See, they don't like talking about them. We did have writers who who put it out there and sacrificed a lot for this generation. Man, you had brothers during some of those uprisings in the late 60s in particular. Man, on the East Coast, West Coast, um, on the roofs of buildings, sniping. Man, you had riders blowing up police stations and cats were skyjacking planes left and right. You had some cats putting in work. They don't tell you about all these guys. I've been telling people about some of these un, untold stories. In one of my movies, American Maroon, we talked about in the 1960s up in um, Cairo, Illinois. Speaking of Illinois, is a town that's basically a ghost town now because the black folks ran the white supremacists out of it. You won't ever hear about this. In Cairo, Illinois, the white supremacists were kind of stomping down on the black folks and the black people say, you know what? Damn all this. The black folks gave them an ultimatum. They say, on this date, you, by this date, we better all have jobs and we better have our money together. On this date. By this date, if you don't have us in the space we need to be, because we're taxpayers, y'all sitting up here discriminating against us, y'all playing this little housing game on us. If we don't get our paper straight on this date, we're going to turn up. And the white supremacists thought they were bluffing. And then brothers start whooping ass. And eventually ran the white supremacists out of the whole town. They're like, if we gon' if we all going down, y'all going down too. So we just gonna leave this bitch a ghost town. Look up Cairo, Illinois. They shot the sheriff. The brother the sheriff got shot by them brothers. They ran the sheriff out of town. The sheriff had to go to Washington, DC. He's like, hey, can these niggas are doing too much? Can you help? They were like, man, niggas all over the country are turning up. What do you want us to do? See, that's when later on they had to start militarizing police. That's why they created SWAT. They needed a militarized police presence here for black people. That's the only reason SWAT was created. SWAT was created for black people in America because black people were turning up so heavy in the damn 1960s. Don't let these people fool you about the civil rights movement. What was going on behind the scenes, they don't like talking about it. Brothers was giving these people the blues. Look up Cairo, Illinois. Look up the history of that and why it's a ghost town today. It's basically a ghost town. <clears throat> I'm going to tell you about this. <clears throat> Excuse me. And my man was talking about the young people and how they view certain things. Let me tell you something, what they do with young folks, young black people, especially our black girls. See, they try to work on the minds of our black girls. See, they got two things for the black girls. <clears throat> when they see a young black girl and she's kind of bright, they're going to corner her off and turn her into a Candace Owens. Or a stud. Okay. They're going to turn her into the next Candace Owens or Bell Hooks. Now, when they see a young black girl who's not as academically inclined... They're going to turn her into the next Sexy Red. That's what Sexy Red is for. The Candace Owens is they elevate her to give a voice to the intellectual people so that they can have somebody to relate to, but you have to be a coon or a mammy. And they want to give the young girls who are not as academically inclined, they need to give them a role model, which is a ratchet Sexy Red. And that over-the-top ratchetness there's a lot of people who kind of gravitate to it. And there are a lot of sisters who ain't even ratchet who gravitate toward some of that because they can kind of live vicariously through a sexy red. 
It's a real deep psychological thing with that. Because when you see a sexy red, there's a freedom to sexy red. There's a certain freedom that people see with somebody who's just an unrestricted ratchet. You understand? You can be as gutter and degenerate. You don't have to have no decorum or standards. You can just do any damn thing. On a subliminal level, people look at that as a sort of freedom. And you can still be relatively successful. See, that's the thing. There's a reason why they have to make somebody, they got to get somebody as a symbol who's a ratchet and then give them the aesthetics of success. You understand? Because people know if you act like that in, in normal life, you're not going to go too far. So you have to carry yourself a certain way. You have to regulate yourself sometimes. And when you have to regulate yourself sometimes, sometimes you want to you know, you, you want to release in extreme ways sometimes. That's why a lot of teachers are freaks. A lot of guys, y'all know what I'm talking about. Some of those women who are school teachers, the biggest freaks are school teachers and nurses. Women who have to be very, very professional at their jobs. They got to be very professional. They got to be very upstanding. And women like that, you get them behind closed doors. They got all types of throat action. Have y'all been with a teacher before, fellas? Y'all know what I'm talking about. A, a teacher? A school teacher? Nigga. Some of the best freaks. <laughs> the best freaking I've been with was with a school teacher. Some chick who was a teacher. You know, they let it out. That's why you see a lot of these them white teachers always getting caught with a student. You know? They always going to jail because they mess around with some damn student on the low. You know? which you shouldn't be doing, you know, but he's just giving you the mindset. A lot of people who have to have these professions where they have to be upstanding and they have to have decorum, um, psychologically, they look for a liberation of um, deviancy to a certain degree. It, there's almost a freedom, even temporarily. Yeah, you dig? So there's a real weird psychological dynamic behind a lot of the ratchet um, propaganda that's out there. All right, let me get a couple of more calls because, again, I ain't going to be on here too, too long. Not going to be on here too, too long. And I've already been over an hour. What's up, Brooke? I see you, beloved. Um, but, yeah, family, y'all need to let me know who we should have who are some of the speakers we should have for the rally for reparations? Who are some of the new speakers we should have? We're going to have some of the ones from the last, and we need some new ones. we got reparations. Let me see. W4. Let's get this person in. All right. Raise your hand if you're ready to get on. Y'all raise your hand if you're ready to get on. Let's get um. said. And let's get said, then we'll get no cap. All right, said. All right, while we're waiting on that, let's get Miriam in here real quick. Let's get Miriam. All right. Hey, what's up, said? Just taller, bro. Said. What happened? Oh, yeah, don't say it's for real, bro. I said, what are you saying? You're a little mush mouth, and I can't understand you, sir. Why oh, you yeah, don't say it's for real, bro? Said. Oh, you that mush mouth dude from the other day. Okay. You're using a different... Okay, I remember you. You're the little mush mouth dude who worked at Amazon. Where's Why my you package? Don't say it's for I real, bro. shirt. Um, where are my shirts? Did you mess up my order of at the Amazon warehouse? Why you hating on black entertainers, bro? Why you hating on speech therapy? Bro, why you hating on black entertainers, bro? 
Okay. Look, I'm not, we're not going to do mush mouth tonight. Uh, Miriam, you good, ma'am? I am. Grand rising to your brother, Tariq. Hey, beloved. Hey. You're over there sounding sultry. What's on your mind? Indeed. Um, I would like to um, nominate Dr. Clyde Winters. I think he will be a um, great speaker, very knowledgeable, and um, very um, well-educated. He's a professor and all that good stuff, although he's retired, but he's on the money. I think he will be wonderful. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. And Clyde is my guy. He was in the last film I did. So shout out. Well, no, no. He was the last film I did was Microphone Check, which is coming out next month. But Clyde Winters was in American Maroon. I right, no cap. You good? Yeah. Hey, what's up, Tariq? How you doing? Yeah, man? I'm doing great, man. Glad to be black. Let me tell you. Yeah. Um, about a couple of uh, broadcasts ago, you were talking about um, Lincoln. And what he said about assigning white supremacy, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now that location where that debate was held is about thirty-five miles outside of Cairo, Illinois, in a mm. town called Jonesboro. Yep. Wow, I didn't yep. know that. And you're absolutely right. That history is it, it can't be it could be lied on, but it's right there. Absolutely right. Oh yeah. Yes, All right, indeed. my brother. My microphone mic check. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. But yeah, yeah, that's 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 heavy. That is heavy. Um, let me see. Let's get um let's say it, your ass ain't getting on no more with that mush mouth, bro. Let's get the God Frank. Let's get the God Frank in. The God Frank. Where you at, the God Frank? All right, the God Frank, turn your microphone on. All right. While we're waiting on the, the God Frank, let's get um, let's get Doctor Feeling Free. Doctor Feeling Free. All right, y'all better turn these microphones on, man. We got a lot of dead air going hey, on. Hey, what's the good, Tariq Nashi, man? This is Dr. Fillings, the Black Jerry Springer, a.k.a. Mr. Wendy Williams. It's a pleasure talking to you once again, brother. I just wanted to just let you yes. know about the um, that the situation in Haiti with that Arab YouTuber that got kidnapped, talking about the, the gangs kidnapped him and stuff like that. Yeah, what was up with that? Because that sounds like fabricated that. lies. If they had kidnapped him, they would have beat that boy, took that Fendi shirt off his back and that Burberry and his camera. These are, you know what I mean? Like he's he's doing all that for clout. And now he's he's in a prison right now. They they locked him up and we might not see him for a long time. You know how those prisons in Hades are. Like, they got no computers, no running water. <laughs> Damn. So they did lock him up. He, he not he's detained. I don't want to say he's arrested, but he's detained in a facility. I got I got, I've been watching his story. I exposed him for using the N word numerous times on this app. Like he that's his favorite word is N word this N word that N word N word N word. I've been I've been on his head all week all week. Wow, all right, man. Good looking out, man. Good information on that, man. Shout out to Haiti. Shout out to barbecue down there in Haiti. Shout out to barbecue. They try to demonize barbecue, look like barbecue is trying to um, drain the swamp, you know, from what it looks like. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But, um, you know, I want them to get it together out there. Okay, so um, the, the God Frank, you good? All right, I guess the God Frank is not good right now. His joint ain't good. And by the way, guys, microphone check, man. Go to microphonecheck.com and um, get your tickets for the movie theaters. We got theaters all around the country that's going to be showing the movie next month. Go to microphonecheck.com. And also, we have an event here in Los Angeles at the Hidden History Museum, April 13th, Saturday night. We got a bunch of phenomenal comics, great complimentary dinner, complimentary drinks, great music. Um, Get your RSVP spot at Hidden History 
museum.com. That's hidden history museum.com. And again, family, let me know who some of the people you would like for us to bring to the rally for reparations. We're going to have a, it's going to be a good vibe. We're getting it together. Um, we're going to start getting our planning committee together this week. Right after I um, talk to the the park people out there, I got a meeting with them in a couple of days to get all the logistics. And once we do all that, we're good to go. Um, and again, I like some suggestions. I would like to have a go-go band out there to really give praises and props to D.C. Just make it a real vibe. Just make it a real vibe out there. So my D.C. people holler at me. But anyway, man, let me get up out of here, man. Go to HiddenHistoryMuseum.com and MicrophoneCheck.com and go to RootWorkStyle.com to get your rootwork deodorant. All right, I'm out of here. Puppy Akute, Lola Vuve to the family. Peace.